you are commanding one of the new boats. This is where your heroic story will be recorded. What if I'm not the person everyone expects me to be? There's something I need you to do for me. Is it something illegal? It's about my life. It's either her or it's all of us. Today's Cinema Confidencio is in Tallinn, Estonia, where we're going to meet with some of the cast and crew for the new production Das Boot, a TV series inspired by the cult and loved movie by Wolfgang Peterson from 1981. The TV series, inspired by the Oscar-nominated film and based on the best-selling novel and its sequel, is filmed in Munich, La Rochelle, Prague and Malta. The story brings the senseless reality of World War II with two original storylines, running parallel on land and sea. Packed with international talent in front of and behind the camera, the series follows the crew of the fictional U-Boat as they leave their home port, whilst also following the resistance as it fights the German occupying forces. The cast includes Rico Kohn, Vicky Kreeps, Lizzie Kaplan and Tom Lashiha, and they are directed by Andreas Prohaska. Rico Kohn is the first one to tell us what was the most intimidating part for him. Intimidating was nothing, to be honest. It was more like a deep respect for the character. But that's always the case. But um, for Das Boot it was different, because uh, before we even started the shoot, everybody was like, oh, you're following Jürgen Prochner's foot footsteps, you know, and we, like, they uh, put a lot of pressure on me, but I tried to not to be influenced by that. I went to a lot of museums. I bought myself some picture books, tried to get as much information I can about submarines. Um, I watched documentaries, movies, and then we had some Navy theory, some little boot camp. Well, I hope that both stories, the one on land and on the boat, are interesting. Um, but for the fans, maybe it is um, to be on the boat and see how we react to this kind of uh, an, an environment and, and what's happened to us and the connection between the characters. And of course we have some homages, uh, like some lines that I say also Jürgen Prochner said in the, in the original movie. So for the hardcore fans, they, they will recognize. Because I think it's, it's a very modern, um, emotionally driven drama. There's always a lot of tense in the air you can always it's, it's, it's a very good pace you know it's very it's very modern and I think we have very strong characters from very strong female characters and um, and I think you get to know these characters in the first two episodes very well and I think that you want to know what's happened next we have our, our own uh, whatsapp group uh, when when everybody's uh, uh, online and we can chat you know, and when, when, when somebody's there or somebody saw, you know, advertisement, he takes a picture and, and he, he sends it to everybody. And of course, we stay in good touch. Sure. I was approached to come and do it. I think that the company in Germany wanted to do a wanted to do a version of Das Boot and they weren't necessarily sure I think what that was going to be of talk of a remake or a sequel. Uh, and they came, I think the, I'd had experience of working on some big international shows uh, and I think they were looking for someone with that experience. Um, so I came onto the show and you know we were pretty much you know I was working with a German co-writer and we, we pretty much had a blank piece of paper at the start with Das Boot written at the top question mark. What are we going to do with this? Um, and you know, we had to think about it. It's always interesting, right? I think because I, I like the fact that you've got the creative element, but you've also got to you've also got to fit in some practical considerations as well. To, you know, it's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle. You've got to put it together. We 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 felt that for the contemporary television market, the international television market, we needed female characters. We needed English-speaking characters so the show could sell in English-speaking territory. All this stuff is kind of 
it sounds like, oh, but actually that's part of the fun, I think, of putting a show together. So we developed this, this kind of overall structure for a new version of Dust Boot, which is, which is not intended to uh, be a remake or a sequel or emulate the original film in any way. It was really designed to be a kind of new thing, taking advantage of that title. So what we have is a, I think a pretty bold and kind of, um, a kind of ambitious new show. I think the key thing for us was, and I think with the series, you need to know where you're going to start. You need to know where it's going to end. That's incredibly important as early as possible. So we basically plotted out a kind of eight, and it was very rough, and it, and it doesn't necessarily tally exactly with what we now have. But we put together a rough kind of structure for a first series of this show. And I think the key structural um, elements that are worth pointing out was that because of the, 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 the need for female characters, the need for English speaking characters, what we did was we decided to break the story into two kind of distinct, I mean, not in the first episode, but they, but they become two sort of distinct parts. And I think that if you're making a show for this contemporary market, you know, you have to, you, you want to get female audiences to come watch, you want, them to, you want them to relate to the characters as much as possible. I don't think that, you know, I think eight hours of just a U-boat, and you know, I think that's a long time to watch guys, guys on a U-boat. Um, and I think, I think that we, it, was, it was all those considerations, I think, trying to get make sure that, that, we, that we could connect with a female audience. Um, and also just, uh, just, as you say, just, just how, I mean, this is one thing we haven't talked about, is how, what the relevancies, what the, what the relevance of the show is to today. Attitudes to women, attitudes to what, attitudes to fighting, young men turning to violence, all these things are part of the show. But I don't think you can really, I think it, it would be a very difficult and be not necessarily desirable to make a show that didn't have any kind of appeal to a, to a female audience. I'm not interested in doing that. I like writing female characters. I find them really interesting. We need to make this personal. Get together all the explosives we have left. Whoever you are, you better be worth it. Carla is a member of the French Resistance. She's an American, uh, and she fought um, in the Spanish Civil War as part of the resistance, and she was then taken to a concentration camp. This all occurs before our show begins. And so when you meet her, she is injured from escaping from this concentration camp, and now she is choosing to use the remaining months of her life to continue fighting the good fight. When the audience first meets Carla, she's doing what she does best, which is bossing around her little French boys and she remains sort of a mysterious figure for the first couple episodes and we slowly get to know who she is and why she's there. You know, when we started shooting, no one knew who she is, honestly. Even Andreas didn't know. No one, everyone was like, but who, who is she? And uh, I think she's difficult to describe because in a way she's maybe everyone in the sense that she's the human in the story, so she's the human heart. There's no filter, there's no, she's not controlling her emotions or controlling them by thoughts, she's not manipulating, she's not. And then these things happen to her and life is happening to her and the war and the people and, and the lies. And she gets stuck inside this spider web of, of lies and of power games and she's kind of forced to play the game. Well I didn't prepare for being a radio operator and learned all this stuff but um, Andreas wanted a strong bond between uh, Vicky's character Simone and her brother my character Frank. So <laughs> she invited me to, co to come to Luxembourg to visit her parents and like to try speak in French together and just spend time together because I mean both of the characters are separate in the series she's at the coast and I'm on the boat so there are thousands of kilometers between them but he wanted this or he wants he wanted to feel this connection between the siblings German actor Tom Vlasicha is in the role of the Gestapo officer Hagen Foster and he tells me on the phone all about playing this character I wanted to ask you a little bit about your character because he's kind of not very nice. Why do you say that? 
<laughs> well, because, you know, I, I think he's yeah. going to do some well, really bad things to people. Well, it, I think the important part uh, is for an actor um, not to play any cliches, you know, and that's, I mean, that's also a sign of a good script or a bad script, or it's like uh, a good script will always have uh, uh, multi-layered characters that are ambivalent, that are nuanced, that have different sides to them, like like, like people in real life, you know, it's, it's boring to play just a bad guy. And, I mean, doing a series, it's, it's interesting that this allows you um, to show those different sides, like, one at a time and one after another and I agree I'm a bit uh, maybe not likable in the first two episodes but uh, uh, that can always change. Cinema Confidential was one of the special guests at a very big event for the TV production Das Boot in Tallinn, Estonia. A group of journalists from all over the world was able to feel the atmosphere of being on a submarine for real, just like the characters of the story and to hear comments from cast and crew in the impressive Estonian Maritime Museum Seaplane Harbor.